like to greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Now, some of us may feel like it's been a long week because God has been challenging us in certain ways. Now, when I was a little girl, um, one day, my grandfather brought a radio home. No, one of those radios that you carry around, you know, back in the day, you know, young, young, young people won't understand this one. But he, he brought it home and I didn't know what a radio was. So I was fascinated, you know, what it was. What is this thing? And I was hearing voices coming out of this thing. And I wondered, where are the voices coming from? And I was curious the fact that where are they coming from? So my grandfather never misses an opportunity to teach. And I believe that he brought the radio home just for that moment that I would ask him, what is this thing? So when that happened, I asked him, what is this? And where are the people coming from? This is what he said to me. And I was all ears. He told me that a radio has a receiver inside so that it can receive, contain, and express the radio waves in the air. Now the outer box or cover of the radio is not that good. The most important part is the inner receiver. He said, there's no one inside there because these people are in a small room somewhere, but the waves carry the voices to us in this manner. Now, I never forgot that because that is how he began to teach me that I also have a receiver within me, that there is someone that speaks through me and I must be alert that I'm always tuned in to that person. Like I said, he never missed an opportunity to talk about God. Everything with him was about God. In a way, God made my grandfather a vessel to bring his knowledge of God to me. I think I learned discipleship without even knowing that I was being taught discipleship. And I think that is why it's something that is in my heart. And I believe Jesus did the same thing with his disciples. He taught them things without them having to be aware that he was teaching them. So in our gospel reading, it was just after Jesus had come back from the wilderness, right at the beginning of his ministry. We're not told if Jesus was taking a stroll on the beach. No. And he suddenly bumped into these fishermen. Mm -mm. Knowing Jesus, knowing what we know about him, he probably was intentional walking near the sea to meet these fishermen. Matthew says he saw them and they were casting a net in the lake for they were fishermen. And Jesus says, come, follow me. We are not told that something grand happened. Nothing grand happened. Rather, that they were busy with their everyday life, working. Jesus says to them, I will make you fishers of people. Just imagine that you are busy in your garden and someone comes up and says, come. Follow me. In modern times, with everything that is happening, we feel unsafe and scared and lock ourselves inside. We will probably be asking questions. Who are you? And who are you to tell us we need to follow you? And we will probably try and assess if this person is not or 
dangerous before following them. But these brothers did not ask any questions. We are told they left their nets and followed him. So why did they drop everything? Have you ever thought of that? What compelled them to follow Jesus? I think, I don't know about you, but this is what I think. They were responding to the prophecy that God spoke in Jeremiah chapter 16, verse 16. That says, but now I will send for many fishermen and they will catch them. And Ezekiel chapter 47, verse 9 to 10, which says, fishermen will stand along the shore from En Gedi to En Igliam. There will be places to spread the nets. The fish will be of many kinds, like the fish of the Mediterranean Sea. In these readings, God was telling us that Jesus will use fishermen to grow his kingdom. In a lot of ways, this is exactly what our diocesan vision speaks of when it tells us to cast our nets into deep waters. Just like Jesus, when he said, follow me, Jesus said, follow me and I will make you. Now, underline that, I will make you. He did not say, I will teach you, but he said, I will make you. Now, when you are being made, you have no control whatsoever. But when you are being taught, you can choose whether to listen or not listen. Jesus knew he would make them into something different. He was not saying you are not good enough to be fishermen. No, but he was saying, allow me to make you vessels. Once I'm done, you will know how to be used to heal my people. Just like you sat and mended the nets. The patience it took for you to wait for the catch of the day will not be compared to the patience you will have to have. This might sound wrong, but it was as if he was saying, I'm going to make you bait. Now, that's scary. Jesus can, but I will give you boldness to know what type of bait you need to be. Now, being bait can be dangerous, but we will, we will not be ordinary bait. We will be the kind of bait that is attractive, the type of bait that will lure the fish. Now, Peter, Andrew, James, and John already were skilled fishermen. They learned how to fish. They understood that we can both go into the sea and have the same bait, but we can still come back without catching any fish because it might depend on the reel. Now, I learned this from Samantha's brothers. I have never gone fishing, but this week I spent time with fishermen. Samantha Charles, she's somewhere at the back. Samantha Charles' brothers, all three of them, told me in fishing, presentation is important. So when they were talking about all this, I was writing things down because I wanted to learn because I've never gone fishing. Jesus was saying, I will make you. I will make you connect with God and I will equip you so that you can be released. Your lives will be a presentation of the kingdom. Jesus spoke about the kingdom of God being near. So they were to carry the treasure of heaven. And Jesus was to release the captives. Not only did he walk in the light, but Jesus was the light. And they were to carry that light to the world. And Jesus was going to make them and teach them how to do that. So that they can draw the people of God to God. So when he saw them, he did not see their imperfections. Mm -mm but he saw what a treasure they will be for the kingdom. That is how he sees us. It was as if they were like treasures hidden deep in the ocean. 
The Apostle Paul says, Now we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God. So the power is not from us, but from God. That shall be real for us now. And we need to know that Jesus is making us representatives of his kingdom wherever we are, wherever we go. We are his representatives. Let's face it. Jesus was calling them and saying, I'm going to take you in a different direction from the one that you're expecting. Because that's what Jesus does. He never takes us in a direction that we expect. He always surprises us. I don't know about you, but that's how I feel. So Jesus constantly calls and challenges us to a new way of living. Trust me, the disciples constantly misunderstood what that meant for themselves. And perhaps we can be a bit guilty of the same misunderstanding. Peter, Andrew, James, and John left everything. With their misunderstandings in life, with all the messes they had in their lives, they still dared to follow Jesus. They were not perfect, but they followed Jesus. I do not know why they thought, but all I know is that they were about to step into the light. Jesus called them for the preparation of what God was about to do in their lives. I always believe God never puts us in the light too soon. Because he knows that if he does that, it will ruin the exposure. So the disciples had to walk with Jesus to learn from him before they could be exposed. So you might be going through a dark place right now. You might be saying, what can I offer to God? Maybe feeling void, maybe feeling emptiness. But let me tell you something, that never stops God from moving because God moved Jesus to go by the Sea of Galilee so that he can call those fishermen. So if God was able to move even in Genesis chapter one, where it says, now the earth was formless and empty, darkness was over the surface of the deep, it says the spirit of God was hovering over the waters and God said, let there be light. So God is able to do anything. He is able to do anything and everything, anywhere and anytime. So when we allow Jesus to make us vessels of heaven, we will become vessels of honor, sanctified through Christ. We cannot just be vessels but we need the sanctification from Jesus Christ. The, the Apostle Paul says, we are sanctified so that we can be useful to God and be used by God to grow the kingdom. So Jesus prepares us all for good works. So are you ready? Are you prepared? for the good works that the Lord wants to do? Are you ready to let the Holy Spirit impact, impact your life? Are you ready to let God use you? Now, last week, after Kevin had preached and we were leaving the church, Dave was standing right where the cross is. There's a cross that I put there. And he was sharing something to me about what God shared with him when he was praying. I'm not gonna tell you what it is. But as he was speaking, I didn't see Dave. I saw a white flag. I didn't see his face. 
I saw this white flag. As if God is saying, while he was speaking, what we need is to fully surrender ourselves to him. Not partly, but fully surrender to him. So that he can make us vessels so that he can make us vessels of mercy, of love, of caring for one another. Just like the Apostle Paul is appealing with Corinth, there must be no division among you. So that's why I made this little fact. So that we can write, because there are a lot of things that sometimes hinder us into coming fully unto Christ. Or you may know someone that you just need to write in this flag. Because at the end of the service, when we come out, you are going to say, Lord, I just surrender myself fully to you. And there is a cross right at the back. And you are going to put this flag onto that cross. So remember James and John left everything. But God is not asking you to leave everything. Well, some of us he has. But he's just asking you to surrender. God wants us to be like that radio. Kulu brought home. He wants us to receive and be his vessel and then give his signal out. So, how are you giving his signal out? Because that is important. Remembering that we are representatives of Christ. Amen.